guards many secrets in this quiet, peaceful place. But now, something strange is unfolding. Something that began more than 60 million years ago. Something that concerns a mysterious death. The story sort of began back in, in uh, 1991. Uh, it was, this is an area where we spent very little time in, had the opportunity to spend much time in. So when we got the chance to do it in 91, we, we uh, started prospecting the area, just essentially going up and down the hills, looking for the bone protruding out of the hill. Um, on one day, uh, Robert Gephardt, uh, high school principal in, uh, in East End, joined us for, for the day and uh, we showed them, you know, generally how to go up and down the hills and what to look for. Uh, and there's no real techniques involved in finding in finding fossils. It's essentially essentially uh, seeing the bone protruding out of the rock. You know, it depends on the light of the day and the shadows and and uh, a hell of a lot of luck. It's just one of those moments when you decide to look down in the right place, and there was a bit of a rock outcropping by my feet. Um, so I bent over and picked a chunk of it up, and it seemed to have a grain that was not exactly mineral or just an ordinary rock. So I went down this, this little wash, and there were a number of pieces of the same colored type stone. And again, looking at it, uh, it had a characteristic that was not totally rock. We weren't 100% certain that if it was T-Rex, and we weren't that certain whether there would be more behind the hill. So we followed the trail bone up the, uh, up the slope a bit and uh, discovered where the source was coming out of, uh, which is a good, good thing to happen. And then um, after that, uh, looking at the bones that were, that, were, that were visible, we still couldn't get an idea of what it was. The Frenchman River Valley in southwest Saskatchewan. Could it have been home to one of the most dangerous creatures ever to walk the earth? We came back in April and uh, rediscovered the site and, and buried what we had originally buried and pushed the hill back just a bit to see if we could find something more identifiable and that's when we found the two teeth in the jaw. In this isolated valley, science must now struggle to unearth a great mystery. An unknown victim. No apparent motive. No obvious cause of death. Paleontologists are earth detectives methodically sifting for the truth. So in, for about five minutes, I dug on either side of the tooth. Uh, on, on this side over here, I didn't find a tooth, but I found something that looked like a depression of a socket. That, that uh, made it a little more exciting. Then to, to this other side here, we dug down, I dug down a bit, and I found the other tooth. I found the other tooth that was same position, a little bit smaller, but same position, same angle, and was going back into bone. That automatically confirmed that we did have T-Rex since the teeth are still in the, in the jaw. An actual Tyrannosaurus Rex, one that can be touched and gazed upon in wonder. For a brief moment, science must yield to simple amazement. It was very exciting. We had to actually uh, stop digging. We sort of looked at each other and, and blinked a little bit. And it's sort of like winning the Lotto 649 jackpot when it's at that 20 million mark in terms of paleontology because everybody thinks we know so much about T-Rex, but the opposite is true. We know very little about T-Rex. Discoveries like this don't happen every day, even if you think you know what you're looking for. And then, it's only a reminder of how much remains unsolved. What we know about Tyrannosaurus rex is generally not as much as we would like to know. It's a very rare dinosaur. This is only the 12th half-decent specimen of Tyrannosaurus rex. 
Uh, it's a dinosaur that occurred, as far as we know, from bones and teeth from Saskatchewan and Alberta down to Texas and New Mexico. That's its area where we find evidence of Tyrannosaurus rex. The dinosaurs disappear from the fossil record uh, about 65 million years ago. At that point, the land would have been very, very low, would have been barely above sea level. Even though we were almost as far north as we are today at that point, the land would have been covered by dense, closed, mixed forests, quite a bit of it. We would have had giant redwood trees, we would have had sycamores, we would have had a variety of other flowering plants, we might have had some palms still. This part of the earth has changed dramatically. The Garden of Eden has given way to a hidden world. Creatures that ruled now lay as fractured skeletons, slowly being absorbed into the rock and the soil that they once casually walked upon. <laughs> 